Now I'd like to welcome and introduce you to Anna Kirschberg. Anna is the author and co-founder of Junior Learning. Anna has 10 years experience developing phonics-based resources and books. She uses her expertise in phonics-based instruction and develop purely decodable reading books around a phonics sequence for younger children and for struggling readers. Her decodable readers are built on the principles of science of reading and supports the worldwide movement of evidence-based reading instruction. So welcome, Anna. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I would just sort of like to introduce some of the fundamentals behind our um, Letters and Sounds Decodable Readers libraries. Um, much of the current research today is showing that most children, many if not most, would benefit from a systematic phonics-based approach when learning to read. And as children learn to read using a phonics-based approach, decodable books become a key component or fundamental of this reading process. So in terms of what is a decodable reading book, it's a book that essentially only contains the letter sounds or phonetics that the child has already learnt within the classroom environment. For instance, a child that starts out in the earlier stages, they, would, they may begin learning the sounds of the SATP and they would therefore be able to decode words in a book like at, sat, tap or pat. So therefore, a decodable book is a book that would only contain these words and wouldn't introduce anything unfamiliar in terms of new letters and sounds. Our Letters and Sounds Decodable range, Readers range is 100% decodable, and we really pride ourselves on that. Our Letters and Sounds series follows, allows children to follow through a week-by-week -week progression um, centered around six key, um, fa we call them phases. Within each phase, the they are exposed to a progression or sequence of specific letter sounds. Um, every story in our range of readers is either fiction or non-fiction. Um, we also have a science range, which Julie will touch on later on in the presentation. But each book is written ex um, around a very controlled, strictly controlled text. So therefore, children are only being exposed to words and text that is decodable or can be sounded out based on the letter to sound correspondences that they've already learned. We do encounter um, or we do present high frequent or tricky words as they progress through the progression of books where it's deemed appropriate. And they might be words such as the, is, to or no. So, um, it's just where, you know, as they're starting to learn more words through the sequence, it becomes um, too restrictive to not introduce some tricky words. But every tricky word is introduced on the inside in a cover of each book that they're featured in. Again, Julie will probably be able to um, show you some of that later in the presentation. So our decodable readers, and they are different to non-decodable texts children will not need to rely on using just the context of the story to try and read a new word because they've developed some of the tools around those, the introduction of the letter sounds that they're being taught within each phase or progression. Um, but I believe um, our decodable books carry a really great story, both fiction and non-fiction. And we're building comprehension skills, there's picture to text match, and we're enabling that pre-reading discussion and prediction, just as any other reading range presents. Um, the texts, they're not nonsensical. They have real characters and they have real context and development through the pictures and the text. And as the child moves through the phases, the story development, the sentence structure, it all advances appropriately as they've built up their skills in decoding these words. Um, I also believe the strength of the titles, the, the number of books, we have 300 and uh, I think it's 372 titles. Um, the, the breadth uh, within that is a strength in our range and it also offers, you know, ex expanding ability to repeat and revise. We have revision texts at the, at the end of every phase set. So once they've learned the sounds, then we revise and, and repeat those sounds in, an, in a new title within the range. Um, I'll pass over to Julie because I'm, I think she'll be able to explain quite a lot more by showing you the, the, um, the Wooshka library that we've prepared. Thank you. 
Thanks, Anna. That was wonderful. Appreciate that and, and um, getting a little bit more detail about the these beautiful near decodable books. So I'm just going to go into the Wooshka website and go through um, how to set the reading groups up and how the, the library is laid out. So just before I log in, if you scroll down here, you can see Leveled Library and Decodable Library. If you just click on Decodable Library and scroll down the bottom, and this is where you'll find the scope and sequence for, for the decodable books. So I just wanted to point that out before I log in. So I'm just going to log in here and I'm going to log in as the teacher. And just going to show you here as the teacher dashboard. And up the top here, you'll see leveled library and you'll see decodable library. So I just want to go through the different. I'm sorry, Julie, yeah. we can see the Wooshka website, but we can't see you logging in. Oh, OK. I don't know why, because. Um, you can see that now? Yep. OK. Yeah, so now as you're scrolling, out. I can see that. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Now, did you see the decodable library? I will point that out again because I must yeah. have been on the other screen. Thank you. Sorry, everyone. That's why we have back up at the end <laughs> to support us. Uh, so if you, if you scroll down, you click on the decodable library and if you scroll down and this is where the scope and sequence is. Now I'm going to log in. And you can now see my login screen as teacher das dashboard. Yes, and we can. Beautiful. Thank you, Claire. So up in the right hand side, we have leveled library and decodable library. So I just want to point out the, the difference between the two. So we have carefully loosely matched them, but I just want to point out the difference between them. So decodable and leveled readers are both widely used beginning reading resources, but the approach with each is quite different. The decodable readers are used at the gate at the emergent and early stages of reading. So each decodable reader has been written with a strictly controlled text, as Anna was explaining, so that children are only exposed to those, those letter sounds that have previously learnt. And tricky words feature only after they have been introduced. Letter sound knowledge progresses into blends and more complex skills that children are able to work out new words with knowledge that they can gain from the phonics approach. So it's just building those confidence with the students. Leveled readers are characterised by the level of diff difficulty of the text and have carefully controlled levels according to the student's reading age. Text moves from very predictable text with explicit picture and photo match to the longer passages, which requires more prior knowledge and inference. So I'm going to now click onto the decodable library up the top left hand side. So this is our decodable library book and there's currently 348 books with 60 more that Anna's writing right now coming in 2021. So there's 17 reading boxes and decodable reading boxes are organised into six phonic phases. There are two sets in each phase with 24 titles in each set. In phases two to six, there are additional science sets which have been aligned to the curriculum with 12 books in the set. It's a range of fiction and non-fiction in each phase and every decodable book is supported by comprehensive, comprehensive student and teacher support materials. We're just going to go back up to the top and phase one, which is um, unique in itself because a lot of the decodable uh, series uh, don't have this pre-reading and decodable uh, books. So we do have... Uh, the phase one for pre-reader, which is language free, some phonic sounds, it does not have a science set in this one. So I'll just open up these one of the books and I'll show you. And, it, and it's very similar, exactly the same layout as um, the leveled uh, books. So we have a, a brief description, more detail and activity. 
which the student does get to view. And then we have all this support material down here, which is a black line master, a comprehensive lesson plan. And I do encourage you to look at those. There's a lot of support around those that Anna has written. Printable, a version with and without the text. Now underneath the, the book, there is uh, all the metadata as well. And we will open up this particular book. And I'll turn, they all are narrated. Again, they have to press play for the narration, the same as the level books. And you open up the cover, you can see this one is a pre-reader. And we have all the letters on the inside cover and we have teacher notes as well. And we have loosely um, matched the, this particular level with reading level one. I'm going to go back into the decodable library and I'm going to scroll down to phase two. Now we have put all the letter sounds up at the top of the phases and as Anna was saying at the end of each phase there are revision books for all of these sounds. So if I open up one of the books and you can see here listed in the metadata the sounds for this particular book and the whole sounds for the particular phase and any tricky words. Again, we've got our Black Line Master, our lesson plan and our printable version with without the text. If I open up this book, in the front cover, it, it um, highlights the particular sounds for this book in, the, in all the phase, phase one with all the letters here, pointing out any tricky words. And then we have some teacher notes down the bottom. Again, to press play for the narration. Each book will also have a comprehension quiz, the same as the level books. They will be ready early next year and they will also be narrated, both the leveled and the decodable. So I'll go back into the, and you can filter them. So we have some options there for the filter. And I'm going to actually bookmark one of these books so you can filter them and bookmark multiple books at the same time. So if I just bookmark that one and that one, again, phase two, the same, um, the letter sounds and with revision, and then we go into our science, which are aligned to the curriculum. And they are also um, revision for those phase. So if you scroll down here, you can see it's not, indicating a particular sound because it's covering the sounds for that phase. So open up the book and open the front cover and you can see it's not particularly um, highlighted any letters in that book, it's the whole phase. So I'll go back into the library. Just scrolling down and then we go down to our phonic sounds. So we have a set one and we have a set two, revision books at the, at the end of each set. And then we have our, our science set with an additional 12. Then we go to our phase four, going into the blends and it's listing all the blends across the top, set two, all the blends. And then we have our science set at the bottom. Moving down to our phase five, we have set one and two, listing all the vowel sounds. And then we have our science set. Then we move down to our last phase, which is phase six. And this is for our fluent readers. So we have set one and set two. And then we have our beautiful science set here. And I'm just going to open up Frog Life Cycle and show you. Inside cover with all the notes. Beautiful. And we have loosely matched these to level 20. So that's the decodable library and how it's laid out in the phases. So now I'm going to go into a class list and show you how to allocate uh, the books and what the students will automatically get. So this student here I've set at reading level three to five, which is for their independent reading. And then I've also given them access to one level below that. Now I have no reading group set up. 
So they will also, based on this level I have given their student, they will automatically be given decodable libraries that are uh, decodable books from the decodable library that are loosely matched around those levels. So I'll log in as the student and show you what they automatically view. So you click on student login, select your student, and the student's homepage will automatically default to this now, not their libraries, because we have the two selections. So the student, and I would demonstrate this to your class, especially for the younger levels, is they have the leveled library and we have the decodable library. If they click on the leveled library, these are the um, level books I have given to the student, which they have access 24 seven. And if you click on the decodable library, they automatically also receive the decodable books that are loosely matched around those level books. So it goes all the way down to set two, sorry, phase four, set two, and there's one book within that phase that it's loosely matched to. So that's what they'll automatically get. An option as a teacher, so I'm logging out and back in as the teacher, is to have it more structured, going back into manage class list. And you might want to set up or a reading group or for instructional teaching or however you want to um, run your literacy lesson, you might want to select just some particular books out of the decodable library. So what you need to do is set them up and put them in a group. So currently I have no group here. So to, um, for those that are unsure, you need to create a reading group. You do that in manage class and create reading group. Now you just name your group. Now you can have as many groups as you like uh, set up for particular um, student or whole whole class so you can set up as many books as you like i've named one already decodable reading class one um, for the purpose of this webinar so i just close that down and now i select no group arrow down and i select my group and i tick that box so now i've created a group i need to put some books into that so down here in the reading groups on the right hand side of my groups, I select that and my students will list on the right hand side that are in that group. On the left hand side, we have all our leveled books. Scroll down and now we have underneath them the decodable books. So I'm going to select uh, phase two. And here are the books here. And the same way you would allocate a book um, to your reading group, you just click plus and it drops into the box. So you might want to add two. How many you want to um, add into the box? You can filter them by fiction or non-fiction as well. Now, if I go back into the student, you will see leveled library they now have a set up reading group which includes those decodable books. So the, uh, the teacher has um, given them access to those, so whether it's for their guided reading or for some additional uh, reading at home. You can switch off those as well. And if I go to the decodable library and they still have access to all the decodable books of, that are loosely leveled, the same as before. If I go back to the teacher, I just want to show you how each time how it changes for the student. Log back in and manage group. Now, another option you might want to do is switch off those level books. You might want to just be really focusing on the decodable books. So when I said you can switch off that reading group, over here it's got reading group permission and it's currently on. So you might want to have um, set up some groups, but you don't want the students to be viewing that at home because you want it to be unseen text. So you can actually switch that off to be school time. School time will defer to nine to three, whatever your system is set up, could be 8.30 to 3.30, it will default to that, or you simply just turn it off. So the students don't get to see that group. Now I want to switch off all the, uh, leveled books and I just want them to be working on these particular decodable that I've set up in this group. So you need to change that level access. 
So here you click on level access, the down arrow, and you can see a selection here that says reading group only. So I'll select reading group and click tick. I'll go back into the student logging and I'll show you now what the student views. Defaults to my page, go to the level library and they only have access to that reading group, the books you have put in there. There's no access to the level readers. If I switch to the decodable library, exactly the same. They only have access to that reading group. So it's a few different ways that you can access or um, set up your decodable uh, books. Now I'm just going to also go down back to the website and point out a few things on the website because we have um, updated it a lot, but we do get a lot of inquiries around um, uh, frequently asked questions that come through all the time. So if you click on frequently asked questions and scroll down and we have all these little cards to click on about um, the Bushka decodable and level books. I also I'd like to point out the technical information. So just be um, mindful of the best uh, browser to use for Wooshka, uh, which is uh, Google Chrome, Firefox or Microsoft Edge. There's also other information there for you, which for technical, if you're having any technical issues. But please, if, if the information is not there, please contact our support at wooshka.com.au. So to finish off our um, presentation, I would open up to see if anybody has any um, questions to ask Anna. And put that in the chat or feel free to turn off your microphone and ask any questions to um, Anna. Hi, Julie. Um, hi, Anna. My name's Claire. I have a question about um, older readers who's um, maybe struggling with readers, and I'm just wondering if the decodables texts are suitable for those older students. Right. Thank you, Claire. Um, yeah, they certainly are, especially I would recommend um, looking at the nonfiction and the science um, libraries because we're covering science curriculum topics, the nonfiction, um, you know, it removes that younger child kind of focus around early characters. Um, so I'd certainly suggest looking at those libraries. Um, but in terms of um, the, the future libraries that we're working on, I'm going to work on a fantasy range of readers, which will be specifically for um, older readers who might be struggling. That's fantastic. Looking forward to seeing those. It does come up a fair bit with the schools for those struggling readers. So that's fantastic. Thank you, Anna. And really appreciate you joining in um, in the webinar today. Uh, that's that's wonderful. Is there any other questions at all? Uh, yeah, sorry, I have another question. I was just wondering um, about a quote or costs. How do I find that out? OK, now just clarify that you can see my Wooshka Early Bird special up on the screen. Yes, I can. OK, wonderful. So if you uh, renew before December 15th, you we were wavering the 49, um, 499 site licence fee. So if you'd like a, a quote for your leveled and or, and or decodable, please contact support at wooshka.com.au to take advantage of that early bird special. Thanks so much. That's okay. Okay, well, thank you everyone. If you do have any further questions, uh, please contact again, support at wooshka.com.au and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks, Anna. I really appreciate your time and thanks for your questions, Claire. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. You too. Bye.